underground model. <laughs> The primer I use is a uh, own mix of uh, enamels, Krylon uh, red and uh, Testers black for a semi matte uh, finish. The reason I choose to use a uh, red primer is because uh, so I've seen in the instructions. I'm not sure if the color is accurate, but since the instruction required that uh, parts of the interior to be painted in primer red, I decide to use for exterior the same uh, red. Now I start uh, detailing uh, the uh, interior parts of the turret during the time the uh, primer is uh, getting dry under the model. So I'm preparing the turret for the final assembly. Here I'm using a number zero sable brush with a mix of Liquitex paints, all mix, some sort of French khaki inspired from the um, box art. Now I'm starting the painting proper. Uh, that, that was that moment where you um, start wondering uh, what have I done uh, because the contrast between green and uh, red looks very odd that is just because I never used it before as you can see when the main uh, coat of paint start building up over the red primer actually the result is very nice it gives a warmer tone to the green which I like it After the main coat of paint was applied, I do some uh, color modulation. Uh, I'm using here um, a lighter base tone. I add some uh, yellow to the original green for a faded appearance and I uh, spraying it on uh, random patterns all over the surface of the model. I don't want uh, too much of a visual impact. I just want a slight appearance of uh, faded paint. Same goes for all surfaces of the model. I neglected the bottom because it's not going to be visible and not too much chances of faded paint. Meanwhile, I'm uh, finishing detailing the uh, turret components. Here I'm dry brushing the um, cannon. I'm using um, silver acrylic. I could have used as well uh, enamel, but enamel has a tendency to build up more than uh, acrylic and this um, more garish, giving more uh, contrast which I don't really really like so I prefer acrylic aluminum because it's more easy to uh, remove in the case of a build up and also doesn't give too much of a contrast between the black glossy black and the aluminum I just like the looks of it that's one of the methods I use to uh, replicate the metallic parts now once all details were uh, pre-painted I start final assembly of the turret there were uh, some uh, few uh, minor issues with the fitting of the cannon and the, of the machine gun, but not as bad. Uh, anyhow, the alignment has to be uh, monitored closely. Here I'm applying some uh, pressure to align correctly the parts. And uh, the machine gun, you see the slot has a tendency to turn the uh, machine gun to one side, so here I try to correct that. I'm fitting the bottom uh, plate of the turret to the main turret, and because the turret body was warped on the screw, you, you see a uh, small gap in one side that I try to uh, fill it with uh, glue, and I am adding glue in uh, all contact uh, surfaces. Now I'm removing the uh, masking sponge because the, uh, the basic paint painting process is done and I'm dry fitting the turret just to make sure I don't have uh, paint build up will hinder the uh, rotation of the turret. And once all this is completed I'm moving to uh, painting the uh, exterior details. I'm using uh, again acrylics, cheap craft acrylics from the home front range, own mixes. Here is uh, uh, what I'm calling a tire black which is actually a very dark grey 
and uh, using the same base color with some uh, aluminum mixed to it detailing other parts to uh, give some color uh, contrast between the part it's not very important this is going to be less visible and is going to be later on covered under a uh, heavy weathering you watch us uh, exercise Now also from uh, home front acrylics I mix uh, some uh, old rust paint which is a uh, reddish brown if you want, easy to achieve. Uh, here for the exhaust muffler I am uh, using old brick uh, red also mixed by myself more orangey uh, brown uh, because I want to uh, show fresh coat of rust. The weathering will complete the process so please uh, be patient to the end. You're going to see uh, the look is not going to be that contrasty. Trying to cover all uh, nook and crannies so I don't have uh, any green showing through. Parallel with the main build, I start uh, preparing the stowage, and uh, here I'm applying a um, oil wash over the uh, tarpaulin. That's the final look of it. Uh, the same uh, brown wash, I'm using here a uh, diluted, a highly diluted uh, artist oil paint, uh, Van Dyck uh, Brown. Uh, diluted with um, turpentine and I'm uh, repeating the same uh, procedure you have seen it before to uh, bring uh, the detail to life you can see the finished turret now I don't want it uh, to uh, contrast it, so it's a very very light wash. The same applied on the uh, turret and uh, virtually over the whole body of the vehicle. I started with the turret. Uh, this will uh, make the uh, visors and the uh, rivets uh, showing much better and also will add some depth to the color. to show all the bolts. Now you can see them much better than only if you had uh, the plain green. As I said before, I'm applying this over the entire vehicle. Here I'm uh, adding the last details, I'm adding the wheels here. I'm using to glue the parts Loctite uh, gel, cyanoacrylate glue, uh, because I need a quick bond here. I don't want to uh, use slow setting glue because the wheels may uh, slide out of alignment. So I want to uh, be set as soon as I uh, put them on place, making sure they are uh, correctly aligned so I avoid the later problem. Now I'm removing the mask. That Use it to prevent the oil wash getting again inside the turret to give me nasty streaks. And uh, finally, I am attaching the turret definitively. And uh, here I am spraying a. Uh, gloss coat uh, I used for this build 
a uh, polyurethane clear coat, the one that can be uh, diluted with a regular paint thinner. Make sure you wear a mask because uh, the vapors are really, really nasty. When uh, using this solution, very fine. Atomization is very fine. It spreads all over the house. So if you don't have a paint booth, After the clear coat was uh, set, I uh, move forward to applying decals. I'm uh, cutting uh, from the uh, decal sheet the uh, decals that I choose for this version of the vehicle. You see I have difficulties. Uh, to make water stick to the model so glossy that uh, polyurethane is and it's very very resilient if properly set this clear coat is as hard and shiny as glass you can see how shiny the uh, vehicle is and it was uh, just one application over a semi-gloss coat using a cotton bud to remove the uh, air bubbles and the excess glue and water from uh, under the decals to as flat appearance as uh, possible. Unfortunately, uh, Tamiya decals are uh, a little bit too thick. The edges uh, stick out too much. Further watering can bring them to life more uh, than you want to. But other than that, the decals are very, very good. can see here, I don't know if the camera catches the glare of the Well, uh, once uh, the decals were applied, I uh, also brushed onto, onto uh, decals some uh, microsol, trying to uh, get them to conform better. Then I'm painting the last detail to be added to the vehicle. I save those for last because I don't want it to knock it down uh, during the uh, previous procedures, uh, the weathering and such. So. I'm adding the mirrors and the storage all the way at the end. I know there are other modelers that prefer to glue everything before. I find this as being uh, pretty much uh, inconvenient if you want to achieve different textures, so uh, different weatherings for different materials. Uh, you're going to see what I mean a little bit later. I'm painting here the clumps on the um, pioneer instruments and then I am painting the handles. Uh, those handles were primed with uh, off-white, some antique white I guess, uh, that I'm using there and uh, then they were, uh, they received the uh, oil wash, a brown oil wash, you're going to see the results, they look pretty convincing. I'm attaching here the uh, mirror, I'm using just regular Tamiya Extra Thin because uh, this penetrates the uh, solvent-based uh, urethane. Now I'm moving to the, to a satin coat. So I don't use matte, only exceptional that I use a uh, dead matte finish. I don't like the uh, matte finish. They make the military vehicles look a little bit too dusty and too dead. So I'm applying this uh, satin coat all, all over the surface, every nook and cranny. And forward to the next stage which is uh, oil weathering so I'm using uh, undiluted uh, oil straight from the tube and I had some black and brown here and after I uh, put a few uh, dabs of oil with a uh, moist uh, soft brush I start doing the streaking
for the upper surfaces I'm using lighter tones uh, because that surface is more exposed to sun and dust so it's going to be a lighter it's going to have a lighter uh, appearance than uh, the Anders vehicle but in the corner and recesses I'm uh, still using uh, dark colors uh, again with my uh, moisture brush I just uh, drag making those uh, rain streaks whatever elements uh, dust cake dust uh, that uh, was ran down by uh, by rain as you see on the recesses and corner I use uh, darker well I, I add some white here because I wasn't quite um, happy with a very dark tone so I try to balance uh, the view and as you can see I added most on the um, edges because uh, there the light is going to be mostly reflected and now you can see the difference between one side where the treatment was applied and the other side where the treatment was not applied yet after I finish this uh, process with uh, oil I'm applying the um, stowage and now uh, you can see what I meant on painting the uh, different uh, textures separate so basically the uh, tarpaulin and the uh, vehicle are painted the same green but look the difference and the difference into the texture uh, regarding the texture between two so one supposed to be metal the other one supposed to be uh, canvas and I'm doing the uh, panel uh, tools again here you can see uh, what I was telling you earlier uh, after I applied the um, transparent brown wash uh, they pretty much uh, look like uh, wooden handles it's quite a nice and, and uh, time efficient method the metallic parts they were rendered in the same way that I did with the cannon now my, I'm adding those um, storage crates and munition crates I guess they are that was not in my intention at first but because I forgot to uh, clean some um, pin marks inside those um, fender guards I've been forced to uh, mask them so I choose to put those um, boxes but I'm happy with the decision at the end because they add to the uh, to the model and the last stage is um, pigment weathering now I've been asked many times on uh, different forums how resilient this uh, kind of uh, weathering is well if you remember I was telling you that I use a satin varnish for uh, finishing the model so uh, the adhesion of the uh, pigment that is quite strong you have to have a wet and or greasy or really really sweaty finger to remove it but there is no model that you touch it that way not a glossy model you don't touch it with your greasy fingers so it's not special treatment this kind of models need here I'm blending my own um, colors I try to imitate some uh, European dust here so it's just a grayish brown if you want you're going to see me blending the uh, different shades as uh, as I go according to uh, what I need I'm going to explain uh, what I'm doing but for now I'm just uh, setting the um, pigments onto the uh, satin coat and then with the uh, soft brush I remove most of it but I uh, don't I'm blending and remove it in, uh, removing it at the same time uh, but um, selectively not removing everything but I'm uh, removing uh, most of it in the center of the panels and uh, I let more of the dust and the nook and crannies and uh, on the riveted lines where normally dust and mud will uh, accumulate more uh, the look that I wanted for this vehicle was a used one uh, cross country used vehicle but not a completely damaged one remember the um, western campaign was very short and many of those vehicles basically were captured uh, almost intact by uh, uh, very much but this one is still French one. now I, I'm blending um, fresh rust so I'm using brown and uh, orange uh, you see because the orange was initially too bright I added some brown so turn it down and this uh, goes over the previous uh, old rust the result is pretty convincing you remove as much of the pigment uh, as you want
Here I'm still doing with the wheels. As you see, the black was uh, just too dark, so we'll make no contrast. So then I lighten with some brown, grayish brown. I'm working my way into uh, details. Uh, also, by blending as you go, uh, you achieve that patchy uh, look of it. So it's not going to be a uniform uh, brown, but it's going to be uh, with uh, yellowish or uh, darker uh, shades. It makes it uh, look more realistic. I'm adding some, I'm adding some uh, black here to uh, simulate some old grease uh, from the uh, axles, but I was not quite happy with it, so I removed most of it. I'm not going to redo it to uh, the other wheels. And uh, here around the uh, engine covers, I'm uh, adding pretty much uh, black, pure black, uh, because this area is going to see a lot of oil and, uh, you know, greasy fingers and uh, from the crew during the uh, maintenance and also the suit from the uh, engine. I guess those uh, those covers they were uh, running uh, open uh, most of the time when the vehicle not engaged in missions because the co-driver really has a tight hot space in there so I guess his, his cover was most of the time open. Now I'm applying the same procedure for the upper sides of the vehicles, but in this case, uh, as you can see, I'm using less. And I'm uh, building the uh, pigment layer at the base, and then I'm dragging upwards to create some blending. But then all the blending I'm doing downwards, so to replicate the way where the natural dust, the way the dust will sit naturally. So here I'm blending upwards. Add more pigment on the on the top where uh, the paint is supposed to be more faded from the uh, influence of the, of the sun. And now for uh, exhaust, I'm using a lighter tone. Here I add lighter tones at the top where the water will sit longer on top of the muffler and the darker tones at the base where the exhaust pipe actually is and we're going to have more soot and more dust from the road. And then I'm blending again so you're not going to see a stark difference between the upper and lower uh, section but if you watch well you're going to see the uh, difference. And that was my uh, experience with the uh, excellent uh, ICM kit. Now we're watching the completed model. You can see uh, the parts on the sprue and the parts on the completed model. So you can make uh, yourself an idea of how the process was uh, going on. And uh, here is the uh, final uh, product on a uh, rotating display uh, table. So I dare say it looks quite, uh, quite good. So please enjoy watching the model and I see you next time with a new project. Please check the end of the video where you're going to see exactly what, what I am up to for next. All the best until next time.